Hello folks, it's me again, Amanda Enderman, your trusty tour guide in the wonders of the wonderful city, also known as Rio de Janeiro. How do you like my makeup in this video? <laughs> I'm even tempted to call for my boo. Actually, if my makeup is a bit uh, witchy in this video, it is on purpose. Because on this very video, I'm gonna talk about the witch of Colonial Rio, also known as Bárbara dos Prazeres, or translating Pleasure Barbara. But before I go right into the theme of the video, I have to remind you that I'm offering walking tours through the city of Rio and they will be listed on my website, which the link will be in the description box below as well as in the first fixed comment. So all you have to do is click there, contact me on WhatsApp, book a tour with me and let's get to know the city of Rio in person, folks! And of course, in the tour I won't be wearing such a makeup. I was hoping that you were gonna wear this makeup! No can do. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Anyways, without further ado, let's hop right on to the theme of the video. Pleasure Barbara started off as plain and simple Bárbara Vicente de Urpia. And this de Urpia came from her husband, which some sources say was of a wealthy family and was called Antonio de Urpia. They both were born in Portugal and they moved to Brazil when Bárbara was only 18 years old and this was in the end of the 18th century. And she was a very good-looking young woman. She had lots of admirers wherever she went. And some sources say that she committed adultery with one of her many admirers. Furthermore, the sources vary a lot in terms of this story. Some say one thing, some say another thing. So some say that she did it because she simply grew tired of her husband and she wanted to get rid of him. Some say that he would beat her, so it was a way of escaping even. But what the sources say unanimously is that she got rid of her first husband by using just a knife if you catch my drift. And so she went to live with her companion, I should say, and the second relationship of hers was also not a successful one, unfortunately. Because you see, the second man, he took away her money. The little money that she had. Oh, I forgot to mention that she also got rid of him in the same manner as she got rid of her first husband. <laughs> So after being marked by the crimes and not having another alternative, unfortunately, she went to work in, shall we say, the world's oldest profession, <laughs> if you catch my drift. Teenagers or kids that might be watching this video with your parents' permission, I'm watching you. Ask your parents what this means and they will tell you the way they see fit and or when they see fit. But I would also like to address teens and children that may be watching in a very after-school special-like manner. Don't rely on just good looks or physical strength in order to make a living because those things go away with time. When choosing a career, or better yet, when choosing a profession that will help you provide for yourselves, use your brains above everything else. Good looks and physical strength won't last forever. And this is precisely what happened to Barbara. You see, because she went to work in this place over here, which is the Arco do Teles. As I said before, in the video Growing Apart in Rio, which I will leave the cards up here for those of you who haven't seen it, this place was inhabited by the Teles de Menezes family until in 1790 there was a fire and it devalued the place a lot and this is where Barbara comes in to work here in the world's oldest profession. And at first, she was thriving in that profession because, of course, she was young, she was beautiful. What could possibly go wrong? Time. It's very 
unforgiving in that sense. So with time, the marks of old age started showing in her face. And so she started getting desperate because it was either that or starve. And of course, with the marks of time showing on her, she started losing clients and with that losing money. Because she was so desperate, she went to every kind of witchcraft that you can possibly imagine in order to procure some kind of ritual or potion, something like that, which would make her perpetually young. Until an old witch, some sources just say an old witch, other sources say that it was a slave woman who taught her that in order to keep herself young, she should drink and bathe with the blood of unbaptized children. And it's funny because only unbaptized children would do for this. At first, she started kidnapping the children of slaves and the children of street people because the first thing that she thought was no one's gonna notice, no one cares about them, they're just slaves, they're just street people, but it backfired and people started noticing it and even told the police at the time and the police started going after her. So she had to come up with another plan and her other plan was to steal the children from the wheel of the unwanted. And I have spoken about this already in the community tab in my channel, if you would like to check it out in more detail. But to sum it up, children who are born outside of wedlock or unwanted children as a whole were left in this wheel, which was in the Santa Casa de Misericordia, which at this time was run by nuns. So the poor mother who was abandoning her child would put the child on the wheel, as you can see this woman is doing in the drawing. And then she would turn the wheel, ring a bell, which would be heard inside the Santa Casa. And then a nun would come from inside and would take the child so that the child would be cared for and looked after by the nuns. And a lot of these children ended up becoming priests and nuns themselves, or some of them would be lucky enough to be adopted, or some of them would be neither and would fend for themselves when they became old enough to do so. But when Barbara started making victims, she would stand close to the wheel and whenever a mother would leave the child there in the wheel, before the nun could come and take the child to be looked after and what have you, she would take the child and kill the child in order to do her beauty regimen, if you will. Did it work, you ask? Well, nobody ever found her or her body. And it is said that to this day, Sometimes, when people are walking close to the Arco do Teles, especially at night, sometimes they will hear a very powerful and bone-chilling laugh, which means that she has made another victim. Stand back! I was baptized in the Outeiro da Glória! At least for that it works. Oh, I forgot to mention that Bárbara dos Prazeres was her nom de guerre as a worker of the oldest profession in the world. So, my friends, this concludes the video about Bárbara dos Prazeres. I hope you liked the content, and if you did like the content, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, share this video with as many people as you possibly can so that each time more people may know about the wonders of the wonderful city. And as usual in this channel, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!